You have probably seen this on social media by now, but I want to talk about the quite severe and chilling repercussions of what happened in Scotland in First Minister Nicola Sturgeon's constituency, actually, and why it matters. Two Indian nationals were detained on suspicion of immigration offences. The Home Office have come out and said that, and by the way, Nicola Sturgeon's a solicitor, so she really ought to know that she has to get her facts right before she attacks a Home Office like this. The two men involved weren't Muslim, so her point on ease is completely irrelevant. But even if it was, folks, do we not arrest those suspected of, of immigration offences if there's a religious festival going on? So we can't arrest Christians over Easter. We can't arrest Sikhs over their religious festivals. The Jewish population in the UK, if Passover is going on at the time, and so on and so forth, that is clearly an unsustainable argument in any functional democracy that respects the rule of law. Do you remember when the EU threatened to block food exports to Northern Ireland and Boris Johnson said, well, hang on a minute, folks, if you do we'll have to scrap the EU-UK-Irish protocol and not allow that to happen. And there were banshee-like howls and screams from politicians in the media about how terrible it would be to break the law. People said, we must protect the rule of law. The rule of law comes first. Well, that, folks, is why I'm really quite stunned to see the same people, the same type of people, primarily on the left, that now seem to reckon that the law should be selectively applied, selectively applied to those that they like, selectively applied at certain times of the year, selectively applied for certain religious groups, and selectively applied if it happens in Scotland. And to prevent Home Office officials from being able to do their job, that's, that can't, that is not sustainable. Look, just look at the clip here. Flying Palestinian flags, the men are from India. This is, I don't understand what they're, they're sort of getting their mix, messages mixed up and clearly assumed that the two men were Muslims when they weren't. So when we actually have this sort of thing, you can see all the police gathered around the van there. When we actually have two tier policing or a different set of rules applying for those seeking the right to remain in this country in Scotland and the fundamental principles of no matter how rich you are, if you're gay, you're straight, you're black, you're white, if you are breaking the law, which the men were suspected of doing, then it apply. It has to apply equally to all, no matter what the ethnic ethnicity of, of those involved. So let's just watch this clip of, and get a real flavour of what actually went on. Speaking in his native Punjabi, Lakvir then told us what happened. I was taken unannounced from my flat. They barged in and took me into the van. I was anxious and upset, wondering how I would be treated at the detention centre. But this community was determined to stop that happening. Hundreds immediately poured onto the streets surrounding the immigration van, even lying under it. This is Nicola Sturgeon's constituency, and the Scottish First Minister had pleaded directly with the UK Home Office to stand down. So was a cynical. So that, contrary to what you might have read on social media, you know, the, these weren't refugees who can't be removed. And with that in, in mind, you have to sort of, I, I can't imagine what it must be like for members of the Home Office. They must have to go through every check and every legal route available to them to ensure that the claimants have exhausted their options as far as staying in Britain's concerned to avoid litigation and things like that from activist groups. I just think this sends out the signal that if you manage to get to Scotland via, say, people trafficking, the kind of criminality that we're still seeing, let's not forget, at the English Channel, with people attempting to get here in unseaworthy vessels, well, it says to people like that, that if you get to Scotland, if you manage to get to Scotland, you won't be removed. And Poland suggests that there isn't actually a great deal of divergence as far as opinions concerned. All of us across the UK support those coming here with the skills we need, but we don't support those who are suspected of being here illegally, which seems to be the SNP's quite confused position, which is light on facts and heavy on virtue signalling. So it's absolutely shocking to me, 
and I, I think a dereliction of duty actually that no politicians as far as I can see have actually stood up and spoken for the majority that do care about the rule of law and quite rightly so without it we might as well all pack up and go home because we're in for a hell of a ride if we lose that sort of core fundamental principle of any functioning democracy and I'm shocked and appalled that more people didn't stand up and say well actually the home office officials the police are just doing their job which is to apply the law that can't be selectively applied based upon which glaswegian mob or the scottish separatists actually happen to approve of it puts the police and the home office officials in a very difficult situation what do you do now if you are one of those what do you do when you can actually i don't know fear for your job even fear this mob if you do your job and apply the law, fearing that those in the Scottish government and elsewhere will apply pressure on them to actually give way. This isn't the kind of thing that we ought to tolerate here. Far from this being a sign of Scotland's openness, I actually think it's a sign of Scotland following a path to lawlessness, which I reckon we all ought to agree on either of the four constituent parts of the UK that that would be an entirely, I think it's safe to say, less than desirable outcome for a member of the UK, and let's not forget, England's neighbour. I'm Darren Grimes for Reasoned UK. Let us know what you think in the comments section. Reasoned relies upon grassroots donations from people like yourself that want us to continue producing our high quality free thinking content. So please do consider clicking the link and donating no matter how big, no matter how small, because it really does ensure that we can keep on keeping on.